Let's get some analysis from Stefan Korshak, who's a senior military correspondent over at the Kiev Post. He joins us now from the Ukrainian capital. Stefan, good to see you. Um, there's a lot I want to cover with you, so let's start with the, uh, the expected conflict in, in the Donbass. I mean, this is going to be what determines the outcome for Russia's uh, operation in Ukraine, isn't it? Well, certainly that's possible. Um, the uh, Russians seem to have left the Kiev and Chernigov areas uh, about two weeks ago. They've been redeploying, they've been reinforcing, and uh, pretty much everybody is waiting for a big offensive. Obviously, the Ukrainians have been reinforcing and preparing as well. Uh, there have been some reports that uh, the Russians are having difficulty assembling force, that not all of their troops want to go onto the attack. Uh, I've talked to people in uh, the southeast uh, that have told me that they are uh, the authorities there are trying to force men on the street into uniform because of a shortage of manpower. Uh, that's anecdotal, not complete confirmation. Mm -hmm. But as time goes on, one wonders how long it's going to take for the Russians to get ready to uh, conduct an offensive. Um, if it comes, then it just becomes a question of force. And that's why the Ukrainians keep saying that they need weapons to defend themselves against a major attack like this. We're showing pictures of uh, a pretty much obliterated uh, Mariupol. I mean, your conflict zone experience includes Chechnya. It includes Georgia. Uh, how does uh, what you've seen uh, back there uh, compare to what you're seeing now? Well, this is an order of magnitude worse. This is a full scale conventional war, uh, the likes of which that have not been seen in um, Europe since the Second World War, easily. Um, uh, the, the level of destruction, the amount of people killed, the amount of uh, equipment destroyed, it, it's more than anything that we've seen uh, in close to a century, probably. I would add that uh, I've worked out of Mariupol, and uh, the destruction there is just shocking, and it really does look complete. Um, it's an amazing amount of firepower that's been expended there. For weeks now, the Ukrainian president has been calling on Western countries and leaders to send uh, more aid, uh, more uh, funding, more weapons. Uh, the United States finally approved another uh, additional $800 million uh, in military uh, aid for the country. Uh, how do you think this will sort of um, play into the expected conflict uh, in the East? Well, it's hard to say exactly because it comes down to a question of the uh, military aid that's been promised, when is it going to get into the hands of the Ukrainian troops? Some of it, uh, for instance, the uh, anti-tank uh, missiles, the uh, body armor, that moves very quickly. Others, uh, other parts of it, for instance, tanks, uh, large anti-aircraft systems, they take more time to move, they take more time to deploy, and uh, they frankly get, take more time to uh, be released uh, from European nations. And uh, when uh, the, Ukraine, the Ukrainians are looking at fighting, again, one of the biggest battles that's been fought in Europe since the Second World War, and uh, anti-tank missiles and body armor are insufficient, probably, to, uh, con to, to restrain a major uh, Russian attack. And what's more, the Ukrainians, if I, you talk to the soldiers, they will always tell you that if uh, we have enough tanks, enough artillery, especially enough artillery ammunition, we'll take the battle to the Russians. Uh, I've had soldiers tell me that uh, if we had full-scale equipment at the start of this war, we would already be back on the Russian border. Mm -hmm. Certainly that's bravado, but that's also an indicator of what they're looking for. They're looking for heavy weapons, conventional arms, artillery and artillery ammunition at, at the top priority. Uh, how soon it gets there and in what quantity, it's very hard to say. And but you can ask that same question about the Russian side, too. Okay. Stefan Korshak, thank you very much for joining us here on TRT World and the News Hour. I do appreciate the analysis.